10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Wack Wack Attack. Today is January 18th and <laughs> I know I say this every day and it's kind of become a joke now, but seriously, a lot has happened. So let's get started. The first thing is um, last night at around 10 to midnight on Eastern time, we got this buy coming in for 400,000 US dollars. Um, and everybody's like, wow, like, that's cool. Like, nice big buy. And then a few minutes later, we get the... But trading kind of moved on, right? Because it's like, it's okay. Like, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good move. And then a few minutes later, we get the same person buying again for another $200,000 and sends the ratio to an all-time high. So everyone's like, wait, what? And then King Nut at that point says, wow, we got a Binance listing. So... That's where the fun begins. Now let's have a look at what happened. There was this, um, just after 11 p.m. Eastern, um, this um, Binance uh, blog post announcement was released saying Binance will list Rocket Pool RPL in the innovation zone. Now what are they saying here? They say um, spot trading pairs, isolated margin pairs. It says, what is Rocket Pool? It says um, Ethereum liquid centralized, uh, cent Ethereum liquid staking derivative provider um, pair smart node operators with stakers to pool ETH for staking. And it said, reminder, innovation zone is dedicated uh, trading zone. Use it able to trade new innovative tokens that are likely to have higher volatility and pose higher risk than other tokens. So of course, it's not a new token, but I guess that's just copy and pasted from their usual token listings. And then um, it says like just information about um, um, fees and all that kind of stuff. And thank you for your support and other information that came out. So everyone kind of went um, went like ecstatic and literally within the space of five minutes, we had hundreds upon hundreds of um, buy orders and the price hit new all-time high after new all-time high. And um, yeah, it, within five minutes, it was just, it was, it was kind of bonkers, like absolutely bonkers. And um, People are just like, wow, like just kind of ast astonished by just how much it was moving so quickly. Trading kind of went haywire, like you couldn't get a message in. Um, the charts were just broken. So like this chart here um, shows like, you know, a steady kind of um, a steady kind of um, price around $32. And then a candle just went all the way up to $42. And this was like 10 minutes after after the news broke. Um and liquidity on on um, for Ethereum on Uniswap went down to 38,000 RPL, which is hardly any RPL at all. There is liquidity in other places for RPL, but um, you know Uniswap was always the main source of liquidity, and it just kind of vanished, which was astonishing. At that point, I think you know people thought the sky was the limit because just a few big buys would eat into that completely. So then, what happened is. Um, we got this message from um, Dave who said, May, um, oh, sorry, let me just go back a second. So Shrooms of Smeagol was saying, um, four years ago, we were memeing about getting a Binance. Now here we are. And then you guys are legends um, referring to the team. And uh, Dave says, mate, I know and glad you're here. Really literally turned down every centralized exchange with their core marketing campaigns for years and copped so much for it. Um, honestly, it was the downfall of 90% of the projects from the 2017 ICO phase. They paid so much m just to get listed and then bankrupted themselves. So um, that, of course, just shows how the team has never paid a single dollar for any integration, um, any centralized uh, exchange listing, anything like that. And they've held on to those values. And those values that they had from the very beginning are bearing fruit now, right? Because if it's... RPL is literally hitting all-time highs um, when 99%, I think, of those projects that launched in 2017 have gone to zero. So it's a huge testament to the team and it's absolutely wonderful that um, you know, not only are we still standing, but we're actually actively thriving right now and that's absolutely remarkable in this market that we're in. So then what happened is um, 
the another thing like that came became clear is the listing fee for RPL to Binance was zero BNB. You know the team didn't pay a single dollar and um, they didn't give them anything, right? And that's that's kind of linked to the comment I was just making. And then um, another exciting thing that's happening is in addition, Binance will add RPL as a new borrowable asset with these new margin pairs on isolated margin. Oh, uh, sorry, new margin pairs on isolated margin, right? So. Uh, not only are you going to be able to spot, buy, and trade RPL and Binance, but you will also be able to um, use margin. Um, so I don't know exactly what the margin numbers are. Trading is live right now, but I think I'm going to cover that stuff in tomorrow's episode. But um, yeah, if you really want to go DGEN, then margin is the way to go for you, not financial advice. <laughs> Okay, so here was the all, uh, all-time high overnight. Um, well, not overnight, up to midnight. Uh, there's there's some technicalities that we'll talk about in tomorrow's episode. But um, we have 0 0.02965, um, which corresponded to $46.96 on Uniswap. So that number, um, we'll talk about that more tomorrow as well. But that is now the all-time high. As you all know, I am the keeper of the all-time high. And when people ask me what is the all-time high for RPL, this is the number that I will give them. 0 0.02965. Incredibly close to 0 0.03. But hey, that hopefully will come in the next few weeks. But that US dollar amount is absolutely remarkable because it was basically a 50%, yeah, 50 pump in USD price and in, um, in ETH price in the course of 25 minutes or half an hour, basically. So um, that movement, as I've only seen something similar to that when Tetra Node bought in, and even that wasn't as violent as this in terms of like uh, such a big gain. Um, absolutely amazing, truly, truly remarkable. Like um, I was asleep for this, so so I wasn't around in trading. I joined a little bit later, but um, it was it was really, really, truly amazing to see. So yeah, it, it was euphoric, definitely. And then on um, on CoinGecko. The price a few minutes later was listed at $57.53. We're going to be talking about that more tomorrow as well. But um, we went all the way up to number 57 on the uh, CoinGecko rankings. We even had like Wanda pop by, Maso pop by telling everyone congrats. So it was really cool. But we went up to number 57 on, on the rankings, which is an all-time high for um, for the Rocket, uh, the Rocket Pool's RPL token. So that was really, really cool. Okay. And Hodger uh, was giving us a little bit of um, a little bit of a um, heads up to what might happen in the following hours. So after the announcement went live, um, the token was going to start trading uh, four hours after the announcement. So Hodger has opened up the Binance listing playbook. You guys may not like to see these patterns, but the high probability pattern is always pump an announcement and dump on spot market listing. Screenshots of altcoins with Binance listing announcements. First arrow is the announcement and second arrow is the listing. Good news is the probability of the floor versus pre-announcement, floor price versus pre-announcement after the listing is high. Not financial advice, a probable strategy to sell into the actual listing and buy back. So there are a couple of charts here for four different tokens. Um, all these tokens are kind of like like nothing tokens that anyone really knows about um so you can see here like you know there's announcement and then there's listing and then after that the price comes down in some cases really violently and in some cases kind of gradually um we'll be talking about what the price did on um rocket uh, rocket fuel tomorrow but um that's definitely something to have a look at and pay attention to at that point and people did listen to hodja at that point and um, they were making like a few people in the community were selling at that point so yeah I'll, we'll talk about how successful that strategy was tomorrow okay and then um crunch shared this oldie he says an oldie but a goodie um when this was posted on may 29th 2020 rpl price veered widely from two dollars x uh, up to a peak of four dollars x and back down to two dollars x and this is are you not entertained so um i think that kind of was um like a history like echoing um like two years later basically um to two and a half years later even um to kind of give an idea of what happened next so the next thing is um what is the next thing here oh so this um 
interesting comment from Joe saying, do you get paid in RPL? Wo asked Joe, do you get paid in RPL? And Joe said yes. So I think Joe is having a very nice day today because um, he just got a nice, well, at that point he had a nice pay rise. And the good thing that Joe did was, um, I guess I'll go make a mini pool. So he locked in some of those gains, spun up a new mini pool. Awesome stuff for Joe. Congrats, Joe. I'm really happy for you and for the rest of the team as well who got a pay rise. And then just before midnight, which is when I, when I stopped following uh, updates because there's just too much, um, David Hoffman was in, in trading and he said, fun fact, Bankless hasn't sold an RPL, uh, even though there's like no sponsors anymore, lol. Um, and then Jasper says, zero ODAO sales. And David says, did I stutter? So I think this is really cool that, um, you know, we... Um, have all these ODAO um, partners who are so well aligned with with um, Rocket Pool um, and Bankless actually spun up 10 mini pools I think um, a few months ago I guess they'll be in a position where they can spin up more money pools now so um, that's really cool to see that David popped by and like was sharing some of the excitement of the of the community and like people were really happy with um, with his comments Jasper called him a fucking Chad which which that was a very Chadish move so good job David Okay, so that took us to midnight, so now we're moving on. <laughs> so um, the next thing, well, one of the things that happened yesterday was um, we had the Ultrasound Money um, community space with Justin Drake, and that was a really cool episode where um, Justin popped by and talked about all things Ultrasound Money, um, the idea of Ultrasound Money, the Ultrasound Money Relay, and there were a few things that... Um, like it's a it's a wonderful wonderful uh, discussion. He he was there for about fifty minutes. Um, it was a wonderful discussion, and there were so many moments in that uh, discussion where um, there was like really um, great sound bites. So I'm really hoping you know that people can pull those out in the coming days and like kind of turn them into little clips, and because they're very very memeable. But um, yeah, there were some technical issues in the beginning, and then um, the episode started, and people kind of like started responding to it in in trading, asking questions. Um, and, um, yeah, I can't really, I don't have the, the time here to do a full, like, breakdown of the call, but, um, definitely go back and listen to it, it was a very, very good call. Okay, and then a couple of things that, um, that, uh, Justin said kind of really perked up the ears for, um, trading, so Sneaky said, uh, he's quoting Justin saying, trillion dollar staking industry, and then a few minutes later he said, uh, well, a minute later, he said, multi-trillion dollar staking industry. Now, that is really exciting because if ETH reaches a trillion dollars, then that will give us about um, $8,500 ETH. And then multiple multi-trillion dollar industry is obviously much more than that. So that's really cool. And then Sneaky says the level of casualness in which he said it, though, as if he's like sure, so sure about about it. So it's really great. And then a few, a little while later, I'm so sorry, there's just too many tabs open. Um, oh, wait, a few, let me just go back. So a few seconds later, he actually said um, multi-trillion dollar, and then he said quadrillion dollar industry. So <laughs> Sneaky says, Justin sounds sufficiently bullish, <laughs> which I guess is sufficiently bullish. Yeah, quadrillion dollar is just unimaginable. I think uh, we'd have to go through cycles of crazy hyperinflation for that to happen, but Hey, who knows with the world that we live in now. So then after Justin finished at around um, three o'clock, after about 50 minutes of talking, um, we uh, pos like shifted the last half hour into like a community update call, going through the Reddit updates from that we talked about in the episode yesterday. And um, one of the great things in there was like the refresh of the website. So that really got the community buzzed. Um, Maverick was talking about the the... the refresh of the website that's going to happen and um they're saying about how um this is super bullish and branding will appear different so i think um you know the, they might down dial down the orange also the layouts of the paging the pages will change instead of there being one long page there'll be different pages for you to find different pieces of information so that's really exciting uh and then a lot of the other stuff that was covered was um the stuff that we were talking about in the episode yesterday. And it turns out I didn't miss the Coinbase POAP, the Coinbase uh, ODAO POAP. It hasn't been distributed yet. So Maverick, you better be sending me one. <laughs> okay. Next, we had this news from uh, Mark Zeller. I don't know if you all remember, but like a few weeks ago, um, there was a person from Aave, Mark Zeller, who popped into um, General, I think it was, and um, or support maybe even, and asked to speak to a member of the team. 
And Mark says, I just posted an Aave ARC to onboard Rocket Pool's RETH into Aave version 3 market. I want to thank Marceau and the Rocket Pool team for their support on this ARC creation. So then um, Marceau retreated it saying, this is a really big deal in my opinion. Happy to have a small hand in moving forward. So now let's have a look at the Medium post that went along with this article. Um, so it's not, sorry, governance, Aave governance post that went along with this. Sorry, I should have had it open from before. So there's information about, you know, what is Rocket Pool addresses, um, audits, like all the information there. Summary says this arc uh, presents the community with an opportunity to add RETH to the Ethereum version 3 market as a reserve uh, motivation. The STETH reserve on Aave is the largest reserve across all of Aave uh, deployments with 1.47 billion in deposits. That's B with a billion, which is by far bigger than anything that RETH has, of course. Uh, exceeding ETH and USDC is partially due to several communities having built products that deposit STETH and borrow ETH as part of a rewards maximizing strategy. So this is a folding that took place um, using Aave for um, STETH. So basically what they did was they they deposited STETH, borrowed ETH, and then staked that ETH with Lido, then took that STETH back to Aave and did the thing over and over again to maximize yield. Of course, you know, when uh, the markets went um, kind of bust in June, um, uh, STETH really lost its peg. It went down like by 8 or 9%. So it really hurt it at that point, and it's never really fully recovered since then. Um, however, like it's been an absolute force in getting um, in getting Coinbase, uh, sorry, in getting a uh, uh, STE STE yeah to grow to such a huge um, such a huge uh, capacity. So. Um, so, you know, uh, Mark says uh, onboarding LSDs, source of additional revenue for Aave, benefits the ecosystem as a whole because this onboarding has an effect on asset liquidity and peg resilience. So that's huge. And it says there's specification and high level um, overview of the project and token, giving information. So there are a couple of things here that are um, different from what we understood before. So one of them is that we as a community thought that Aave would not happen until the Chainlink Oracle wasn't uh, deployed. It seems like they don't have to wait for the Chainlink Oracle now because there's no mention of Chainlink Oracle in this in this article, which is one thing. The second thing is we always thought that there would be a cap on um, RETH um, minting to prevent the same kind of folding that we saw for STETH for happening with RETH. However, in this link, please correct me if I'm wrong, it's there's no mention of any kind of cap. So those are two pieces of information that mean if this onboarding happens right around um, Atlas goes live, like I can't, I, I like for those of you who are listening on podcast right now, my, my mouth is agape, I'm in shock because this will be so incredibly bullish for our ETH adoption because we'll just have our people who already believe in our ETH, who already hold our ETH, will fold their our ETH numerous times, which will which will like shoot our TVL by like <laughs> an astronomical amount, literally an astronomical amount, potentially overnight. So without adding a single new node operator with um, LEB eights, we'll be able to three X our our ETH um, capacity, a lift off, without adding a single new ETH from node operator, and then with um, with uh, our ETH holders being able to fold, honestly, we might be able to um, eat up that demand within days or weeks if if it works out the way that you know it worked out for STETH. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Like we're still going to see more information that'll come through. But um, have a look at this medium. Uh, sorry, this uh, governance post from the RV website and um, check out what Mark said because it sounds quite amazing. Um, I think there might already be some comments. Um, incomplete support of onboarding uh, our ETH. Thanks for the suggestion. I agree. Healthy LSD liquidity is better for Aave. I agree with the proposal uh, signaled by support and push for CP ETH. We believe there is value in the wide, wider array of liquid staking derivatives. Um, Rocket Pool ETH is a great continuation of this effort. Our Lama, we believe it's beneficial to be the first lending market that lists our ETH and other LSD assets. Thanks, Mark and all. Um, working jointly with our ETH parameter recommendations and will return to the forums with analysis. So the initial feedback is positive. This is going to be like, I can't, honestly, guys, I can't like 
hype this up enough like this is going to be mind-bogglingly big um if it works out the way that you know we think it will so seriously that hype ladder is getting hypish af right now and yeah <laughs> i think big 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 things are happening which i'm incredibly excited about let's see what else is going on so um not sure says version 3 has debt limits but the proposal is for unlimited with a laughing face that's what we've just been talking about which is yeah and then um wait what else was there here yeah so oh yeah um yeah, and then uh, Sneaky says, has there been any further clarification on how the Aave thing is proceeding with our lack of uh, CoinList Oracle? And Jasper says, they're backpedaling on everything they told me, um, but whatever, lol, about not allowing, allowing our ETH. So it seems like, you know, the, the posturing that they were doing up to recently has kind of changed, and everyone is buying into this LSD narrative right now. It's going to be a huge driver until withdrawals and the period right around withdrawals, maybe in after withdrawals, and rocket pool is so well positioned right now for amazing things to happen and i'm so excited and then um yeah that was just fantastic and then um jasper later i'm sorry i don't have the messages it might be in tomorrow's show um where jasper was saying that it seems like they're going forward without um a chain link oracle so i'll cover more of that tomorrow yeah <laughs> Okay, so next we have some discussion about grants and funding. So as you all know, grants uh, cycle closed on Sunday night. Um, Dondo said, would love to see more people around here get into the debate about how the GMC should compensate contributors now versus after the fact. Potential salt factor seems high considering its money and points of view seem to be all over the place. So there's a lot of discussion going on about how much people should be paid and how the price changing is really impacting that. So... Um, when when I wrote my when I wrote my grant uh, proposal, uh, RPL was around twenty dollars. Last night it went up to like forty seven dollars. That is a huge change in um, RPL price versus uh, grant amounts. Um, <laughs> I'm on the GMC, so I really shouldn't be talking about this too much. However, this link is in the in the notes below in the description. So go back read this discussion. It went on for hours. People talking back and forth about um, how they should approach it and and community community suggestions. Um, and Whiskers is after reading it. I'm very glad to not be involved in any way. Um, yeah, it's been it's been it's been a lot of discussion and it's taking a lot of time, like just even thinking about it. But um, you know, we at the GMC we're going to try our absolute best to be fair, to be um, long term thinking as well as um, wanting to reward people who worked so hard. And um, yeah, I I really shouldn't say much about this because I am. Um, and not only am I, am I on the GMC, but I'm also um, a grant applicant. So it's kind of, I, I really should be like careful with what I say about this. So um, yeah, <laughs> we can talk all about it once uh, the uh, grants have been allocated and whatever. But please, please, please do go to this thread that Dondo uh, linked and talk about it in the forum because we're reading all of it. And, you know, we really want to um, take your feedback on board. So later, um, Jasper asked... Um, yeah, Donda said, don't worry, Wack is going to spend all day tomorrow figuring out what we talked about for you. Um, and Jasper says, before that, Jasper says, I'm mostly out of the loop on the debate. Haven't read trading all day. How are the salt levels? And um, Denim says, spicy, but they want that spicy. And then um, Nosho came back, says, just lots of discussion about grants and GMC stuff. Not very uh, salty, in my opinion. And um, Jasper says, sweet, I was worried the dollar values would bring some salt. Um, not too bad yet. People agree that GMC has a lot of work ahead of them. Yeah, we definitely have a lot of work ahead of us. But, um, oh, is this an update from Mark? Sorry, I missed this. Give me a second. So I think uh, somebody asked, um, oh, about Frax. No, sorry, that's not about RPL. So let's leave that out. Um, that's why I didn't cover it. Um, yeah, there's, there's, like, I can already see there being a lot of um, community pushback one way or another. Um, once the grant amounts are released uh, people will be the unhappy that some people got too little some people will be happy uh, like unhappy that some people got too much like we're just going to try our best and please understand that this is a new process for everyone and um you know we're not against anyone we're not yeah i, I don't know we'll talk about it we'll talk about it once the numbers are out so sorry <laughs> okay moving on 
So um, Valdov says, hey all, uh, doing the sentiment check on self-limiting, and then there's a link to the forum, please take a moment to vote in the poll and or provide feedback. So we talked about this a little bit, and of course the websites have been having um, issues, I think because they were denial of service or some kind of thing. And then it says, so this has been brought a couple of days and not gotten discussion here. I'm going to go ahead and put a poll to see if we have enough positive sentiment uh, to move forward. And I said, yes, let's vote on these principles. So that's my vote. Uh, so it seems like we're going to go for a vote on these principles. A quick recap of the principles. Rocket Pool will ask in the best act in the best interest of Ethereum health. Rocket Pool will consider the impacts of its choices on Ethereum, both immediately and long term. Rocket Pool will prefer to damage itself before endangering the stability of Ethereum. Rocket Pool will willingly self limit its dominance within its staked Ethereum. Rocket Pool will give its node operators autonomy to make meaningful, meaningful choices and not leave the Rocket Pool ecosystem if they find it. And, and to leave the Rocket Pool ecosystem if they find it unsatisfactory, e.g. currently we allow exiting without preconditions and mini pool upgrades are opt-in. So those are some core principles that we'll be voting on. Um, and then later on, you know, we can we can figure out how to um, enact those, but it's kind of like setting a constitution of sorts. So I'm in favor of taking that to a vote. Um, maybe I shouldn't be saying this right now, but I will be in support of voting for that as well. So... Um, let's that oh actually there was a post from langers here um that i should cover wait it's not it's not here i'll get to it. i've got it i've got it right here i think oh yeah so um Rocket Luke had a point um, in response to that, saying there's one thing I think almost no one ever mentions regarding Rocket Pool and something that caught my eye back in the day. The fact that A, we'll self-limit how much one can stake as a node pro operator, effectively up to 150% of your own staked ETH, and B, that you can vote only as such a node operator. Vitalik Buterin years back heavily criticized the governance voting model and proposed the proof of participation model and Rocket Pool uses exactly that. So it's really cool that, you know, what we're doing is kind of in line with um, well-established Ethereum principles, which is great. And then here's the response from Langers. Maybe it's something that I'm, it's, maybe this is a response to something else, but there's some good points, so let me read it out for you all. So Langer says, thanks Ken and Valdorf, points one, three, and four look good to me. Regarding point two, I think that the max deposit pool, oh, sorry, this is about the, max deposit pool size that's going up to eighteen thousand um in 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 the run-up to atlas uh, which i'm in favor of but um we talked about this yesterday as well she so says there's a lot more uncertainty when node operators will migrate how many solo stakers will sign up etc i feel it's better to respond to the tvl as it increases rather than try to preempt i do agree that we should increase the deposit pool before atlas though i just think eighteen thousand, even fifteen thousand, is quite high initially one idea is that we agree tvl targets and deposit pool amounts based on target ratio that way we don't have to vote and we can be responsive as pieter mentioned the current ratio is 2.7 percent of tvl it would be ideal to be lower than that to lift our apr but i know there is a balance bear in mind that what is likely to happen is the following the deposit pool is full atlas is released loads of node operators migrate pools deposit pool is emptied and premium is gone ARB stop mini pool queue forms max deposit size increases anyway due to mini pool queue so that's langas's thoughts um I don't really have time to give you a, my take on that, so let's move on. Okay, so the next thing is a whole bunch of Ethereum um, community members, not Rocket Pool community members, have been kind of taking the orange pill recently and getting involved with Rocket Pool. So one here is Kevin um, Owaki, and um, uh, he says, My Rocket Pool node is synced, gonna launch my first mini pool soon. Any pro tips, let me know. And then. Um, Fitz says, Awaki, we're very excited to hear about your participation. Welcome to the Orange Cool Aid Cult. And um, Fitz says, for those who don't know, Kevin Awaki, he's probably Ethereum's biggest public goods purveyor. He's the founder of Gitcoin. He's currently doing other stuff and is operating this node personally, not on behalf of Gitcoin. Kyle, KBW, is the official Gitcoin representative. Kevin's ideas on regenerative structure, uh, sorry, regenerative culture within Ethereum has done a lot to shape our shared vision for the platform. So that's really cool that um, um, Kevin's getting involved that way. And then Kevin's involvement got a pop-up, which um, you can see right here. 
uh, which is nice. It says, welcome Kevin Owaki to Rocket Pool and Rocket Pool. And then um, there's the Green Pill, uh, which is the his um, podcast with Bankless and uh, the RP logo. And it says, on January 19th, 16th, uh, Kevin Owaki announced he had completed syncing Rocket Pool Node and was planning to launch Mini Pool soon. Kevin's involvement is exciting to the Rocket Pool community because of a shared alignment for the health and regenerative spirit of the Ethereum network, art by Shifrin and distribution by Superface. So one of the things I want to say really quickly is just how amazing Shifrin is. Shifrin like has done a lot of the rocket pool, rocket fuel pops, and now he's doing rocket pool pops too. Um, great, huge shout out to Shifrin. Really love your work. Thank you so much for the support. Um, you're doing great stuff. Keep it up. Okay, next we had um, Kane saying, "Hey Fizz, the buy above was Hudson. I've orange pilled him." And then um, Jasper says, "Hudson Jameson, I love him." And then Kane says, "Yeah, awesome dude." And Sneaky says, "What?" He says, "When I first joined Tetra server, Jasper says, when I first joined Tetra server, he'd randomly throw Zoom links out in the chat with him once in a while, tell him to join us here for sure." And um, yeah, then um, Fizz says, "Hello, uh, Hudson Jameson," um, and kind of uh, Hudson says, "Can confirm I con converted forty-five thousand of rando coins in my wallet to RPL, which is really cool." And then Fizz. Oh, let me see. Um, Fizz kind of explained who he was. Um, oh no, he said, okay. So basically Hudson um, was the person who ran the all core devs calls for quite a while and has had like a bunch of jobs in the in the Ethereum ecosystem, which is really awesome. He worked for Flashbots doing other stuff. So he says, um, okay, it's settled. Sometime this week, we'll have a YouTube live stream call where I set up a mini pool. I did the same thing when I got my validator keys and the testnet validator. I was drinking and the stream took three and a half hours. So that stream is scheduled for um, Thursday evening Eastern. Um, the Gitcoin uh, mini pool stream is scheduled for today at 9 p.m eastern so there's a whole lot of like cool events happening that kind of hinted towards those yesterday but here you got some more information about that now which is really cool okay um <laughs> next we have this comment from thomas that i want to recover he says help i need support the mini pool machine took all of my eth so this is in response to thomas spinning up another 50 mini pools yesterday um he took the ETH that was in part of his wall and I guess some of his rewards and stuff for the execution layer and um, used some of his RPL that was getting more uh, like ineffective and spun up 50 more mini pools. So Thomas now I think has somewhere in the region of 850 mini pools on, on Rocket Pool. So congrats Thomas, um, you are the beacon chain for sure. <laughs> so that's really cool. Okay, and then we had this update from Joe who says, Eligo official, um, your item is on the way. So there's a new 3D printer, um, 10 inch 8K mono LCD times one. So Joe ordered a new um, a new 3D printer to get proteases out, which is really awesome to see. Um, I'm not sure exactly when that will be here, but there's a tracking number that he, he erased. So thanks for that, Joe. Otherwise we could have found out. <laughs> Okay, the next thing is that something that happened a couple of days ago. Um, it was Vasily, who is the co-founder slash CTO, I think, of Lido. And he said, it's so weird people consider Coinbase on ODAO as a good thing for Rocket Pool. Assuming the protocol is unchanged and um, central exchange simulation of the protocol continues, there is only one conclusion. Exchanges will run the majority of it using custodial liquid staking of ETH and RPL. So um, if you have a look at the tweet, he got a whole lot of pushback. There was a tweet from me saying, uh, this is a horrible take. You should be embarrassed. This is the only thing you have to attempt to attack Rocket Pool with. You have to do much better than this. And Bowsi said, you wish, pal. Hani Abu says, it's so weird considering having only 29 node operators in control of 470,000 ETH and 29% of the network is a good thing for Lido. I think it's more than 470,000 ETH. It's like millions of ETH, I thought. Yeah, okay, I'm not sure where Hani got that number from. Maybe I'm mistaken. Um, or the network is a good thing for Lido. Or, oh, each one, sorry, 29 node operators, each one in control. No, that doesn't make sense either. I'm not sure. Um, it's so weird people considering these node operators professionals when they have the worst performance, when they have worse performance than home stakers. And Meek says, uh, centralized, simulation, centralized exchange simulation of the protocol. All right, all staking should be run through the small Lido validator set. You get to accelerate into the protocol. What a joke. So a whole lot of people, like quite a lot of uh, familiar names, like 8th Wonder, Mao, um, Genix, him, yeah. Um, and others um, 
really like um let him have it <laughs> so he didn't respond after that i think there was also a quote tweet from jasper that was really good let me see if i can find that yeah jasper says oh no coinbase is um helping secure rocket pool oracles this means they will soon take over and dominate the protocol with nearly 2000 individual node operators 50 times as many as lido by the way how did your dao vote regarding control and network again some professionals so there was a lot of pushback against this comment so there's jasper's comment which was really great to see um <laughs> it was really funny because someone messaged me saying wow whack like you were really strong against that person we've never really seen you speak like that and i was like oh do you know who that person was and they're like oh okay yeah it was fair <laughs> so yeah it was fair um and then um yeah um anthony sasano came in and says big oof about his comment and he says in jasper says insane in it and sasal you're on the o dao are you going to take over rocket pool now and then Sasal says, yes, that's the only reason why I joined the ODAO. So people were just having a bit of a laugh with it. Like they were definitely mocking him and totally deserved. Okay, I want to give a couple of quick comments before this episode gets way, way, way too long. Um, Blue EVM says, finally, it happened. I migrated from all nodes to home box fully. Um, I really appreciate support uh, provided by all nodes to kickstart this journey. Sephiroth and the all nodes team has been doing exceptional work to onboard non-techie folks and giving confidence to learn about it and freedom to go support network best possible man in the best possible manner and then like he just gave an explanation of things that have changed in his life uh, recently that made him like take the leap towards home staking and then um like what things have been happening in that time and he says i really want to thank the whole rocket pool community rocket fuel devs and builders you guys really changed my perspective towards self-sustainable life wish me luck and if you can if you think i can be of any help please feel free to buzz me at any time hopefully i can be contribute with a few years of rusted outdated it experience one way or another cheers so that was really cool that you know uh, blue avm is now becoming a home staker fizz says i'm really proud of you thank you for showing that this is well within grasp this is how we decentralize which was fantastic to see and finally um there's a comment from me um from the 16th saying whack whack uh, sorry whack from tomorrow hates all of you so for the last few days i've been really overwhelmed with just how much content there has been in um the rocket pool discord and the rocket pool community and like everywhere it's been a lot to get through it to like digest it to find the information to present to you all um i'm so sorry if i've missed things i know that i have missed things for sure because there's just way too much going on um i'm trying my best it's been really hard so <laughs> thanks for your patience with me um i know that i'm like behind on episodes um like i'm giving news from yesterday instead of from today so i'm sorry about that but um i love you all i'm gonna keep doing this and um yeah it's been it's been really busy but tomorrow there's gonna be a lot of special stuff for you all and um yeah i'm really excited to share it all, share it with all of you so thank you so much for watching listening taking part offering your support saying like kind words they really do keep me going and um yeah i hope you all ha enjoyed this amazing day um the binance listing day it's been years in the making so enjoy it guys like i know the price action hasn't been what we've hoped for afterwards today but it was really nice while it lasted. So enjoy, take care, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.